Let me just introduce myself. Um, I am Katie Flick. I'm actually a fifth year PhD student um, at MIT studying neuroscience. Uh, in terms of my R background, I'm actually qu quite new to it um, and only really started using it for my own analysis like two weeks ago, uh, during which I had to do a lot of subsetting. <laughs> So um, this was actually like very timely for me. Um, but yeah, so uh, today's chapter is all on subsetting. Uh, of course, pulling from the advanced R book from Hadley Wickham. Um, and so just to get started, there are three different subsetting operators. Um, I don't know if they have, I don't know what the official names for them are because I've never heard them spoken about, but the single bracket, a double bracket, and the dollar sign. Um, we'll very shortly learn that there are six different ways that you can subset atomic vectors. Um, and that when you are thinking about subsetting uh, different data frames that you have or data structures that you have, um, using the uh, structure or STR parentheses uh, is a really useful tool to make sure that you are uh, subsetting what you want. Um, and so today we'll go over uh, the whole chapter 4.2. We'll start off with just how to use the single bracket to subset vectors, lists, matrices, and data frames. Um, and then we'll look into how to use double brackets and the dollar sign to uh, get a little bit more into uh, subsetting. Um, we'll then use those to do um, sub-assignment. So that's just combining subsetting and assignment, which is like a, a very common thing that we'll have to do. Um, and then we'll end with a few, actually all of the different uh, applications uh, that are in the book of how to use subsetting to solve some data analysis problems. Um, so yeah, and just a reminder, I can't see you. Um, so if there are like questions or stuff, like um, if there's anything that pops up in the chat, uh, if someone could just uh, make me aware of it, that'd be great. Um, so just starting off, uh, how to use a single bracket to select elements from a vector. Um, and so starting off with this simple vector, which <laughs> eventually will make sense to why I picked this. Um, so we just have uh, a very simple vector that has a bunch of different names in it. Um, and so when we are using subsetting with um, the single brackets, if you want to subset multiple things, you just have to um, concatenate them using the C bracket. Um, and so if we want to pull out the third and first item from our vector, we simply put it in and sure enough, we'll get out the third and the first um, element in our vector. Um, and importantly, you can use this to duplicate things in your vector. So if you want to pull out uh, the same name twice, you can easily do that. Um, and also, if you um, if you put in a real number, so something that has a, a decimal, it's not just an integer, it will be truncated down. Um, so here, in this case, both 2.2 .2 and 2.9 produce the same element, um, which is, I think for me, I, I didn't know that, um, but that is like an important thing that there, it doesn't round up, it always truncates down. Um, and this also, <laughs> for me, when I, a few weeks ago, when I was like first actually using R to do this, um, in Python, I had just learned that you can use a negative integer to go from the end of something if you're trying to subset it. Um, but here, if you use a negative integer, it will exclude the elements at those at that location. So in this case, if we um, you know do the neg do a negative of one and two, that gives us everything except for the first and second elements of our vector. Um, and importantly, you can't combine negative or positive integers in the same call. You'll get an error from that. Um, and so, that was just subsetting using integers, but you can also subset using logical vectors. Um, this is a very useful uh, technique for pulling out specific uh, elements in your vector that meet some criterion. Um, so for instance, I can, within uh, my vector x, I can pull out elements that are greater than n. And so uh, just so you know, the, the way that um, if you're using a character, 
um, in this in this way, it will go by alphabetical order. Um, and in this case, if there was uh, a name up here that was like Nate. Um, Nate would be greater than N um, because it would have the the set. It would it would go from the first character to the second character in your character string, um, and so in this case, this allows us to pull out uh, Starbuck and Onyx. Um, and also importantly, is that recycling rules are applied to indices. So if I put in um, just a true false um, indice, it will repeat that throughout the length of your vector, um, but in the book it says that this that there are cases where it's not very consistent. Um, I'm not actually sure what those cases are, but um, general, generally he said it's recommended to um, not rely on that. Um, so in that case, I assume you would uh, instead actually first repeat this so that you would get um, an indice that was the length of your vector and then apply it um, so that you could avoid any potential weirdness that could happen. Um, and then additionally, um, you can also subset with um, an, an empty indice. And so if you do that, that actually returns the entire original vector. So if you want to, um, I believe, create a copy of your um, original vector, you can use this. Um, and if you use a zero, it just returns a zero length vector, um, which I've never used. Um, I'm not entirely sure when you use it, but uh, it's an easy way to create that, I suppose. And then additionally, if you're working with a named vector, you can also subset using the names. Um, and so in this case, we have a vector of names. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, what happens if you use an index uh, that is using a character string? Um, and in this case, it doesn't work, right? Because our, our vector is uh, a character vector, um, but it's not named, even though those are names. <laughs> And so if we, want, if we wanted to use this sort of uh, feature or function, we have to use a named vector. Um, so I can change it so that here uh, I indicate that Starbuck uh, is the name for a dog and Onyx is the name for a cat. And so now if I index using those names, uh, I'll actually get the result that I expected. Um, so that's pretty important. And so carrying over all those rules from how to subset a vector uh, to a list, it works the same way. Um, so you can apply all of those different techniques to a list. Um, the only difference is that a single bracket will always return another list. Um, so when you're thinking about what type of uh, data type you want to work with, list will always return a list when you're using the single bracket. And so. Next uh, step up is to subset uh, a matrix. And so I apologize for all of the um, everything on the screen at once. I, this was my first time ever using the R markdown, um, and I could not figure out how to get these to show up in the right way uh, in time. <laughs> um, but so for subsetting matrices and arrays, um, it is just a, a generalization of the same type of subsetting we just looked over. Um, so if first we can just make a matrix uh, one through nine that has three rows and uh, column names. Um, and so you can use a, a 1D index for each dimension separated by a column. So first looking rows first, column second. Um, I can't remember, I'm, some other uh, programming languages may do it differently. Um, but so in this case, uh, if we use a logical indice, um, applied to the rows. Um, and we also are using calling by names here. What we'll get is exactly that. So we'll get the first row and the third row will come out. Um, and first we'll get the B column and the A column. And you can see how that turns out here. Um, and a really useful uh, feature of this is that 
if you leave either the row or the column slot blank, you'll get all of them. So it's, a, it's really, really easy to get, you know, all of the rows from a matrix that you're working with or all of the uh, columns. Um, and so that's really useful. Um, in addition, you can also subset them with uh, a vector of the specific indices. So if you want to call the uh, third, um, third, well, it'd be three in this matrix, um, you can just simply call for three and that will return that, uh, the element that is at that location. Um, and so then carrying that over to data frames and tibbles, which are probably what a lot of us are working with, um, at least I know in my case I am. Um, so if we just create a simple data frame here, um, when you subset with just a single uh, index, like this one here, you're going to get list behavior and it's going to be indexing the columns. So in this case, you'll get the first and the third columns and all of the rows because it's really looking just to give you back those what's at those column positions. Um, and if you use two, you'll get two indices like we were doing before, then you'll get the matrix behavior. Um, so in this case, uh, I can say that I want rows one through three um, and columns one and three. And so this is what it returns here. Uh, so that's kind of important to remember that if you are uh, putting in the, just this single index that you're, you're going to be getting columns, that's what you're indexing. And so with all of this, there's a danger of, of losing uh, any spe uh, the specific dimensionality of the uh, input uh, matrix. Um, and so if you subset a matrix or a data frame with any single number name or true, like a, a logical vector, um, it will simplify the returned output. So any dimensions that just have a length one will be dropped. So if you uh, just uh, index for one column, um, that column, there's only one column, so you'll lose some of the dimensions there. Um, so you see that uh, here, um, where if you look at um, what you get out, is you're getting out um, just an uh, integer vector one and three. Um, and one way to get around that is by setting, uh, you can, add this uh, additional drop equals false. And so then what you'll get out is you'll still have the one and three, um, but it still does have that uh, row dimension to it rather than just uh, being a, a single vector. Um, and so along that lines, there are just some important differences if you're selecting a single column. Um, if you use a list type subsetting, it returns a data frame. Um, and if you're doing matrix subsetting, it will always simplify. Um, so as you can see here, if I look into a data frame and I just give it this uh, single one, what I get out um, is I still get out a data frame uh, because I'm using the sort of list style subsetting um, and that maintains the name of the column um, and then the vector of it. But if I do the uh, matrix style, um, indexing where I have a spot for the rows and a spot for the columns, um, it simplifies down. Um, so again, you can just prevent that um, by using the parameter drop equals true, um, or you could also use a tibble because a tibble will always return a tibble. It doesn't have, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't simplify at all. Yes. Um, oh, I think I, sorry, did that twice. Um, so uh, just to get started, and I want to be able to see you if I can. Um, so just to go through uh, some common problems that can pop up very easily if you're trying to subset a data frame, um, perhaps someone can let us know what is wrong with this first line here, um, where we are looking into the empty car, uh, empty cars uh, data frame, um, and specifically at, uh, I guess, the cycle um, 
element or column? Uh, you need uh, two equal signs. Yes. Exactly. Very easy, easy mistake to me. <laughs> um, and then what about for the next one? What is the issue with this one here? Someone else, perhaps? I can go. Because um, we're mixing negative and positive numbers together. For yeah. The next. How would you how would you fix that? Depending on what what you think this is trying to do. Well, I guess it depends. If you're trying to remove the first four, then you could just make the four negative. Or if you if you just want the first uh, four, then you you take a negative off the one. Um, mm. This is the first four. I always forget. Is this columns or is this rows? Um, that would be the rows. Right. Okay. Awesome. All right, and then what about uh, the third option here? Um, I think a missing a comma. Yes. Right? Yeah. Then it would go in the front, the first position. You want all the? Oh, I might have done that wrong. The columns. Well, the column is cylinder, and you want all the rows. Right. Where cylinder is less than or equal to five. Yeah. So you would leave it in the row spot and then just add add mm -hmm. a column um, afterward. Well, add a add a comma afterwards in blank uh, if you want to get back all of the entire uh, data set for all the columns. Um, and then what about this last one here? Um, so looking at the same thing and uh, looking for uh, cases where it's either a four or a six. Need to repeat the uh, um, empty cars dollar sill equals equals before the six because you can't or two numbers like that. Yes, this is great. Like I said, I'm fairly new to using R, and these are all things that I ran into, especially the last one, because you know when you're just thinking about it in your head, you're like, oh, four or, or six, that that it should just work. Um, so yes. Uh, everyone uh you got it right i um just put them into parentheses and put the um negative sign outside but yes it, it should work either way i believe so awesome yay got the simple simple stuff down it's great so and the next part is i don't know if any of you guys had the chance to look uh this up or if you've used it already in your own work um but the question is um, what does upper try return? Um, and you know, how does subsetting a matrix with that work? Um, I don't know if anyone had a chance to to look at it, um, but I can also pop it up. Um, so if we um, make a simple matrix here um, and we use this um to if we if we use this on the initial um matrices to then subset the matrices what we get out is this uh string of uh integers here um did anyone have a chance to look at what what this is doing i i had never used it before or seen it before um Oh, that's not. Yeah, I think it's um, returning the upper triangle. Uh, if it's like an identical, uh, say like a correlation matrix, like you're only doing mm. the upper half rather than like the whole thing. I think that's uh, what it's doing. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly what it's doing. And it, it, do it does have like the parameter that you can pass into it diagonal. Um, equals true if you wanted it to also include um, the, the diagonal of your matrix um, in what it puts out. I will say that I, so when you when you do it, you get out uh, a true fault, uh, a matrix that has trues and falses um, in those positions so that it returns the, the upper uh, triangle. Um, I guess I don't, I wasn't, 
I didn't really understand why when you then use that to subset it um, that you just get out one um, one list or, or one vector um, that it loses all of the the um, structure of the matrix um, because it except for the first except for one two yeah except for the first one it, it does have more what you're returning should have it should not be reduced to one like a length of one um unless it's the way that that is working is that it's going through each column that it's pulling from and concatenating them so that all the extra dimensions are lost i don't know does anyone have insight into to why it returns it this way so that you you've you've lost um the the structure does anyone know why um so yeah for for the third part do we need any additional subsetting rules to describe its behavior it's definitely doing something about how matrices will uh reduce dimensionality but um i don't know exactly how it's doing that does anyone else seems counterintuitive i have no idea yeah i was i was really surprised i was surprised mm -hmm. when i ran it um because when you do just run um if you just do upper try x what you'll get out is still a matrix with a, a true false matrix so it, it looks like what I expected. But yeah, when it is subsetting, I don't quite understand um, why when you have subset with a, another matrix C, uh, you get that out. Yeah. Unless it's something, unless it's something that it's, the way that it is subsetting is, to, is more like uh, calling, like pulling from each, um location and so then in that case it's not it's not like separated like you ha you're telling it what to take from the rows and what to take from the columns maybe that's why um that it's like just saying at, at you know take this from this location take this from this location i don't actually i'm not sure um i keep going to this um but well maybe we can uh pose that question um in the Slack and someone who has done this before will will have a good answer to it. Um, but moving on from there, um, we are now going to talk about the double brackets or the dollar sign um, and how to use that to extract a single item. Um, and so I'm going to move on now to talking about candy. Um, I was hungry when I initially did this and I really like chocolate a lot. So, um, so just saying if we have um, a list here of a named list of um, some different types of candy that you might get. Um, when you subset with a single bracket, it always returns another list like we said before. So if I um, subset candy um, for the M&Ms, um, what you'll get out is a bag of M&Ms, hypothetically. Um, if you subset with the double brackets, you return the content of the list. So if I were to subset candy um, for M&Ms, I would actually get out M&Ms um, instead of the back of them. The, I know the, the book uses like a train analogy, but this is the one that an immediately came to mind when I was reading it. Um, and so, um, if we look at uh, this list here of candy, um, what we see is that it is a, a list of four different items of different character um, vectors. Um, and so uh, we have for M&Ms, uh, green, yellow, green, brown, a bunch of different M&Ms. Um, we also have uh, some Skittles, yellow, yellow, green, orange. Uh, for Snickers, we have a bar. And for Reese's, we have well, two Reese's cups, of course. Um, <laughs> And so uh, you, if you um, kind of well, the issue of, of when you're trying to um, return things usually using single brackets or double brackets, we can kind of confirm what I said before, which was a bit more uh, hypothetical. But if I um, do really look to see if I uh, subset um, for, oh, I did number two, should have been one for 
um, that. But anyway, if I just subset uh, candy using the single bracket, what I actually get out, if I look at the structure of it, um, oh, I don't know why I switched it. Anyway, um, is is a list of one. So I don't actually have access. It's not direct access to the items in the list. I have just created um, really like a, another pointer uh, to this list. Um, and if I do it at where I am subsetting into it, um, what I will get out is uh, a character vector. Um, so I'll have it's a more direct access to all the items inside of it. And so, uh, why does this matter? Well, it certainly affects how functions evaluate the data. Um, for one, if I have subset it using the single bracket, the length of that um, item is going to be one. Um, but if I have subset it using the double brackets, I'll get the, um, uh, when I do use length, I'll get the number of the items that were in the list out. Um, and for me, this was when I had not yet actually learned how to subset and I was trying to subset, this was a huge headache for me a few weeks ago. Um, and Additionally, if you want to, you know, do something like find out how many unique items um, are in your uh, data and you have accidentally used a single bracket instead, um, you're not actually going to be able to find out um, how many are in there because, again, you just have that one item, the one list. Um, and I, if I use unique on um, the one that I've used single or sorry, double brackets on, I will actually get out information about what the unique items are. Um, so you can see we have Y, G, O, and R, despite the fact that there are multiple Ys. So that actually works. Um, and so the dollar sign or the dollar is a shorthand operator that is pretty much equivalent um, to using double brackets with uh, the name of a variable. Um, and so, yeah, the most common way to use this is to access a variable in a data frame. It's really quick. Um, and of course, if you're, if you're using RStudio, it auto com it can help you auto complete. So it's very easy to uh, see what is in what different variables you have uh, access to um, and easy to call them. Um, and so the one important difference between the dollar and the double brackets is that dollar does do left to right hand partial matching. Um, so this can be an issue if you are expecting some sort of uh, variable that is uh, actually part of another variable name. Um, so here I've just set up so that it will give us a warning if uh, this has if we've uh, auto completed pretty much um, or done the partial matching. So uh, if I use candy dollar sign R E, um, I will actually get out the uh, contain the uh, two different elements that are in the Reese's um, vector. So I'll get out the two cups. And as it said here, uh, it has found it by doing a partial matching of Re to Reese's. But if you haven't set this up, um, it's not going to tell you that it did that. And it will just give you out the data. Um, and again, you can avoid this problem um, of partial matching by using tibbles. So uh, if, yeah, I think I think that is probably a, a Good way to go. All so right. Quick question on that partial matching. Um, yeah. Is that desirable in any case? Why was it implemented? I don't know why it was originally implemented. Um, I mean, I guess it can it, it could be useful, like if you for some I guess I don't I I don't know the circumstance that you um yeah, I don't really know the circumstance that you would need this, um, especially like, unless, yeah, unless there's like something that you wanted to set up in maybe some sort of uh, loop or repeating thing that would loop through and for all of the variables that start with A and B, and then this is, would be a very quick way of doing that, but it seems like you could get a lot of issues if you relied on that function of this. Does anyone else know what what the the benefit of it is? Uh, 
I'm I'm guessing that it was enough of a problem for enough of people that when uh, the tidyverse uh, stuff was set up and, and tibbles and everything were set up that they decided that that should no longer be the the standard case. But I don't know. Um, and then additionally, um, just to know what happens if you are if you use just an invalid index with the double brackets, um, you get different behavior depending on um, what type of invalid index you use um, and what uh, what uh, type of data structure you are looking at. Um, so in some cases, it returns an error. In other cases, it returns a null. Um, and so pretty much, again, I don't know why that is the case, um, but uh, a way to get around that and a way to get much more consistent behavior is to actually use um, the per package and use pluck specifically. Um, so pluck you, when you use it, it will always return a null or you can set up to return a default value. Um, so this that you can very easily uh, get around it just by using this. And from what I gained from Googling <laughs> is that a lot of people do prefer to use pluck if that is going to, is a potential issue that you could be, um, uh, subsetting uh, some sort of deep data frame where you don't actually know if the thing that you're looking for will exist. So yeah. So moving on to uh, I think the first first application of, of subsetting beyond just subsetting um, is using it for assignment. Um, so subassignment is just combining assignment and um, sub or <laughs> combining assignment with subsetting. Um, and so the basic structure of it is um, that you are, say you have some um, vector or matrice or data frame. Um, when you set it up like this, you can then place these values um, directly into that container. So if you had a list, um, a list of lists that were, and one of them was I, and here for your values, you had like one through 10, that would go drop right into that uh, list structure that already existed. Um, and we just, uh, there's a little bit of a warning that you just wanna make sure um, that the length of these two things uh, is equal and that uh, if you are using, you know, I here that this is actually a unique uh, value uh, for subsetting so that you aren't actually getting some uh, unintentional uh, consequences. Um, and so what I described is that you can use this to add, um, you can also use this to add new things to your list. So back to the candy list that I had before, say I want to add uh, red hots to it. Um, I can very easily set this up here um, by double bracketing, um, giving it the character name for this, um, and then uh, producing uh, a vector of, of, of red um, for that. Um, and you can also use this to remove um, remove things from your data structure. So in this case, um, I decide to remove stickers from the candy. Maybe it's been eaten. Um, I can use null here, and that will actually remove it entirely. And so you can see here at the end, what I have is my list of candy, my bag of candy, where I have M&M, Skittles, Reese's, and Red Hots, and the Snickers are gone. Um, so this is a very uh, easy way to uh, update or change your uh, your data structures. So, um, and so uh, when you are doing this, it's important um, to notice that when you are subsetting, um, when you do this, it actually does preserve the structure of the original object, which can be very uh, useful if you later down the line need to have a specific data structure or data type um, for the rest of your function. Um, so in this case, if I do empty cars and I use the uh, empty single brackets, I can update it with uh, changing all of this to integers. Um, and what I will get out is still a data frame. Um, 
if I instead just do this and as assign this to the empty cars, I'm actually taking this and just and binding it to an entirely new um, data. So in this case, I'm maintaining the structure. In this case, I'm taking this name and binding it to a new object. Um, so that could be kind of unintentional and that in this case, you're not going to actually have a data frame anymore. All right, moving on to some applications. So there were quite a lot and uh, many of them I am unfamiliar with. Um, so please chime in if you have used them or know more about it or have um, any advice because again, most of this is new to me. Um, but the different applications that were uh, in this chapter are uh, using subsetting for lookup tables, um, for matching and merging, for uh, getting random samples and bootstraps, um, for ordering your data, um, for expanding aggregated counts, um, to remove columns from a data frame, to select specific rows based on a condition as we kind of talked about before. Uh, yes, and I think I actually might have skipped this part. Um, so simply like if we're looking at lookup tables, it is uh, connecting just like two different value structures. To me, again, I've actually never used a lookup, lookup table, but um, it has some similarities in my mind to uh, Python dictionaries um, where you have like a one-to-one -one matching. Um, so I can hear where I have um, when I where I have candy and the Skittles, Skittles initially were put in as just Y, Y, G, O, R, Y, um, because that is smaller and better for space and memory, I think. Um, but I can create this lookup table that says, well, Ys are yellow, Rs are red, Gs are green, et cetera, et cetera. And if I um, index this lookup table with the Skittles uh, items, I'll actually get out that matching. Um, so it, it's a really easy way to convert from abbreviations to the full names if necessary. Um, and you can also remove the names very easily from this output by just using unname. Um, and it's also important to note that if there's a value that is in, um, say like Skittles, that is not in the lookup table, you're, it will return an NA uh, in here. So if there had been, um, a different color of Skittles that I didn't list um, that was in the Skittles uh, list here, but wasn't in the lookup table, it would just return an NA. So you'll get that. Um, and so kind of expanding on that, um, using matching and merging. Uh, so Skittles, the company swears that each color is a different flavor. I don't know how true that is. Um, so if I, um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked in, in the music industry or worked with musicians. Um, I have, and they, there are actually musicians who are very particular about which flavors and colors of M&Ms and Skittles that you leave out for them. Um, so I kind of took that idea and ran with it. Um, so here I have the abbreviation that was in my original Skittles list. Um, I, in this data frame, provide the flavor that each of those is supposed to be according to Sk the Skittles company. Um, so I, Y is lemon or strawberry, uh, green apparently is apple uh, and so on. And for you know, my musician, um, they <laughs> refuse to eat apple or grape flavored candy. Um, so here I have, will they eat it? True if it's lemon or strawberry or orange, but not if it's apple or grape. Um, and so we can use uh, this match function, which if you think about the two objects in it, uh, needles and a haystack, it returns the positions where each needle is found inside the haystack. Um, and so if we use match here uh, on our Skittles um, <laughs> using uh, the info abbreviation, so this is what we can use to, to match it on. Um, and then we use this ID to index info, we'll actually return um, a row for each of these matches. So um, for our original bag of Skittles, we get out that, okay, well, 
luckily five out of the six um, can be provided to our mu musician. Um, we mostly got lemon, it seems, this time in the random sample. Um, so yeah, another really, really useful way to use this is to produce random samples um, and for bootstrapping. Um, and so if you have a data frame and you need to just get a random sample from it, um, you can use sample to uh, create an index um, based on your uh, data frame. So the number of rows in your data frame, you can uh, say sample from that um, six times. And yes, you can uh, reuse um, rows. And so if I do that on this data frame um, and I use this to subset this data frame, uh, looking at the rows and returning all columns, what I see here is that I get this um, random sampling of it. So I get two, one, I get four, the fourth row twice and, and, and so on. Um, so you can use this to the sample to control um, the number of samples that you want to extract um, and whether the sampling is done with or without replacement. So very uh, fast and easy way to uh, get some subset of your data randomly. All right. So another do you actually does anyone have any questions about like use this or anyone like use it in their own work and have any um thing to comment on here because i know this is like a very 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 common thing to to do in in data science is that if there's like any notes on this that i missed okay um uh, and so a really useful um uh, a really useful use of subsetting is that you can easily remove columns. Um, and obviously, like there are other uh, functions set up like within the tidyverse and things like that that you can do use this for as well. But uh, subsetting is built right in, and you don't need anything extra to do with it. So um, in this case, going back to <laughs> the reason why I had some names at the beginning of uh, this presentation, um, I am looking at this. Uh, data of lost, found, and adoptable pets. Um, so also, I really wanted to get a dog over uh, the pandemic. Um, so I can import that into the My Data Frame. And if you see, this ha this data frame has a lot of information, um, perhaps more information than is necessary to quickly look through. And so it has just a lot of information and actually a lot of a lot of these columns um are na's um so it's not actually that informative so uh i would like to uh slim this down to something that is easier for me to look at and to find maybe some adoptable dogs so what i can do is with um, subsetting, you can just simply select the columns that you want. Um, so in this case, I am going to subset uh, that data frame to re uh, return pets. Um, and you can see what I get out is I can get out the animal ID, uh, the name, the record, the animal type, and what kind of animal it is. Um, so this is just just using a head, so just the, the top five from that data frame. Um, so we can see here that uh, there are cats and dogs in this data frame, <laughs> um, and some of them are still lost, and some of them are found. Um, but there are also supposed to be some. There are, are also supposed to be adoptable pets in this uh, data set, um, and so you can also use subsetting to combine conditions for multiple columns and to select rows based on a condition. And so I am looking for adoptable dogs. Um, <laughs> And so I also would like to know the pet's name. Um, and so I'm going to exclude all pets that don't currently have a name. So um, I use the is NA on the uh, animal name column, um, making sure that it's not actually uh, NA. Um, and I want the animal type to be dog um, because they're also cats. And I believe some other, uh, I don't know, furry types in there. Um, and also, I want that to be adoptable. Uh, I, I'm looking for an adoptable dog. 
Um, and then, so just to point out again, this is like the one of the early things that we mentioned, but when you're doing this, I do have to make sure that I uh, make sure to put a comma at the end uh, so that I get all of the columns back. And so if I do this, I can produce a list of dogs that are available for adoption um, with their names here. So uh, there's Johnny and Spike and they are adoptable dogs and I also have their breeds. So using subsetting, I can take this large, large, large data frame that has a lot of information that I am not interested in um, and uh, filter it all down. And so um, in the past I've used filter to do this, um, but this is also incredibly easy to do uh, using just subsetting. And so uh, additionally, um, you can order your um, data with subsetting. So um, the order function just takes a vector as its input and returns an integer vector that describes how to order it. Um, and so I assume it's using the kind of standard logic of, of numbers and then alphabetical order and things like that. Um, and so if I take that same uh, dogs, dogs uh, set of data that I produced before and I say, well, first order the rows um, by the animal breed um, and also, um, oh, sorry, um, yeah, so, oh yeah, so order, order the rows by animal breed and then also order the columns as well. So look, names of dogs, so this will return all the names of uh, the different columns, um, the different variables um, and order them. And so by putting this in here in the rows and this here in the column spot, I can return this nicely organized um, <laughs> data frame that has uh, all the animal breeds, uh, the, all the dogs ordered by both their breed um, and has restructured the order of the column so that it's uh, easier for me to look at. So uh, kind of silly uh, use of order, but works for me. Um, and so moving away from the fun topic of dogs, um, you can also use subsetting to expand aggregated counts. So an aggregated count is what it sounds like. It's um, any like any sort of data, um, structure uh, that has, for instance, like uh, inventory is a really good example of what an aggregated count is. So if you have five bags of M&Ms and 10 uh, Snickers bars and blah, 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 um, and each of those is counted, um, that's an aggregated count. Um, but you can use the rep function and integer subsetting to uncollapse those counts um, as I'm not exactly sure why, but so um, just to create a very simple data frame um, that has uh, X, Y, and then the number of those, the count of them, um, what you can do here is if you use rep, so this will uh, allow you to repeat um, something given a number of times. So this will repeat each row um, based on the N. So what you'll get is it repeats um, the first one three times, the second row five times, and the third row once. And when we use that uh, to subset the data frame uh, in the row section here, we then return this expanded um, list where for each uh, for each of the rows, uh, it will go by the number of counts. So for two, you'll get three twos and you'll get five fours and one one. Um, so if you need to expand it, you can do it this way. Um, but I think there's also some other functions that do this without subsetting that people might use more commonly. All right. I, I actually think I didn't I apologize. I did not finish uh, putting this information in, um, but there was just some basic information on comparing when you use logical subsetting or integer subsetting um, and the kind of bare down uh, 
synopsis of that was just that uh, doing set operations are more effective when you are either looking for the first or the last true. So rather than having to go all the way through, um, you can just get the first or the last out very easily. Um, by if you're integer subsetting, you can just say one, I want the first item out or length of um, whatever your data you're working with is. And you can uh, pull out that very, very easily rather than having to have a whole long um, true false uh, vector to subset by. Um, and then additionally, uh, set operations are also more effective when there are only a few trues that you're actually trying to pull out. So, all right, um, that is everything from chapter, well, everything that I pulled out from chapter four. Um, is there anything before we move on to just like finishing up the exercises that anyone had questions about or wanted to talk about? Um, before we go on. Okay. Sorry. Let's go back. All right. Um, so for the exercises, um, we have this data frame here, which is just an expansion of the one that we just talked about. So there's uh, three different variables, x, y, and n, um, with their uh, integer numbers inside of them. Um, and so the question is, uh, how would you randomly permute the columns of a data frame? Um, and can you simultaneously permute the rows and the columns in one step? Um, so does someone have like, the answer for the first part? How would you randomly permute the columns of a data frame? Okay, you guys. Um, so the way that I use it is actually what we used before. We're using sample. Um, so with sample, you can let it, you can uh, say how many samples you want to pull out. Um, so you can actually pull out, you can have it uh, sample the entire, um, if you have, you know, 10, 10 columns, you can have it sample one to 10. Um, and if you do not allow replacement, then it will have, it will take each column once. Um, and I think I actually kind of already showed this, um, if you can permute uh, rows and columns in one steps, as I did with the, <laughs> the dog um, set of data, um, you can actually do this in one step. And so, um, the solution is, is actually really quite simple. You just do, you sample on the number of rows of your data frame and sample on the number of columns of your data frame. Um, if you don't specify the number, it will, it will um, do it for the actual, the number, the length of your, um, what your input is. Um, and you don't, uh, the basic uh, case of it is that it does not do replacement. Um, so in one step, we can uh, permute our whole data frame here. So yes, very quick way to do that. And um, how would you select a random sample of M rows from a data frame? Um, I'm 100% sure one of you can answer this. Can you just do a range uh, one to, you know, rand length of your data frame? Oh, that's a good question. Maybe. <laughs> I've not tried that. <laughs> um, the way that I did it was continuing to use sample. Um, I can't remember what rand 
um, would return. I want. I want to try it though. Yeah, I need to think about the syntax for that. Um, let's see. Rand. I'm. I'm actually. Is it? Is it? Is the um. What is the is the function? Is it is it rand in um R? Is it random? I think it's it's rand in. Is it? Oh no! I'm sorry. It's um. Uh, um. It's okay. Are <laughs> you? I think, I think is it is it? rand in Python though, isn't it? Um. But um, one way to do it is just that you can use sample again, um, and you can tell it um, the number that you want to sample from. Oh, actually, sorry, I did this wrong. It should have been sample uh, n rows, n rows data frame with m as the uh, number to pull out. Um, so yeah, that's much easier. I, I typed that in wrong. No, but I I was wondering if you could do it using Rand, but um, sample well, was... the, the the Rand approach wouldn't work anyway because that's giving you like the first random number of rows rather than a random sample of rows. So mm, okay. Um, and then additionally, maybe you guys can help me come up with like a, a better, some more simple solution to this. Um, is what if the sample had to be contiguous? So um, you want to get out three rows, um, but it has to be three continuous rows, contiguous rows. So one, two, and three, you know, two, three, and four, and so on. Um, does anyone else have like a some intuition on how you might solve that? If not, I have a solution that I think works, but it's not very, I don't think my solution is very uh, clever or easy. Um, so in this case, um, so say that again, we need to pull out three rows. Um, what I did is I just had it uh, provide, so I don't know if I could have used random here, but I had it pull out um, one of the, a random sample from the potential rows available um, but I made sure to subtract the um, the length that we wanted. So that way it wouldn't um, pull out, say, like the last um, row of your data frame as the start. So I'm using X here to find the start um, of this set of rows. Um, and I'm just having it pull out just one, just one from those options. Um, and then we can just use very, very simple um subsetting uh to give the start and the end point um and so you can oops oh gosh um so you can see here uh that the x that it produced with this was four um and then we get also the the next two rows so that we pull out three rows um that are contiguous i don't know if there's a simpler better solution to this though um again i'm so pretty new to R. So um, this is how my brain worked. <laughs> uh, anyone else have like a, a better solution? Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, oh, sorry, I meant to delete it. That was actually uh, the last, the last exercise. Um, so I don't know. That's all I have. Um, go back. Uh, so that is it for the subsetting chapter.